and water. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's uh, good to be able to come back to the House today to provide an update about something that is particularly important to my community, and that is, the leader, uh, of course, as mentioned in my last uh, grieve on Tuesday, the future of the Halleck Cove Football Club. Uh, Members would be aware that that club was threatened uh, with the termination of its lease, something that I uh, was strongly opposed to, and I did feel uh, that the City of Marion had gone overboard with uh, its approach uh, to dealing with the challenges that that club was facing. Because while we cannot condone bad behaviour in our clubs and need to get alongside clubs to uh, help them, overcome these challenges. Uh, the approach that the City of Marion uh, took to announce the termination of that lease with only a few weeks' notice uh, cr has created and did create a substantial amount of trauma uh, in the community that I represent. And it was, uh, it was really upsetting to see uh, so many uh, people in that club, a club that spans generations with grandparents volunteering, uh, with parents and children playing across its, its various teams. Uh, it was very upsetting to see the way that the Council's decision and the way that the Council handled that decision uh, in the days and weeks that followed have an impact uh, in the broader community. Uh, what it was great to see, though, was the way that the spirit of community rallied within that club. Uh, 6,000 people signed a petition which was presented to the Council a few weeks ago uh, to ask that the club's uh, lease not be terminated. And we saw people from all walks of life across the community get together, provide mentoring and support to the leadership, to the management committee in that club, uh, get alongside it and try to uh, outline what they would do uh, to, to improve their standards, to develop their culture and to move towards a, a new future for the club, but an ongoing future in their overall club rooms at Hallett Cove. So many people were involved uh, in the campaign to, to keep the club at, at, at its premises. And I do want to mention a number. Uh, Craig Warman, the president of the Southern Football League. Uh, Lisa Ferracci, the community and, uh, infrastructure and planning manager from Sandful. Uh, Andrew English, the deputy chair of the South Adelaide Football Club. We had uh, Corey Wingard involved. Uh, and, of course, City of Marion councillors as well. And I should mention uh, the councillors who got alongside the club, uh, Councillor Ian Crossland and Tim Gard from Coastal Ward, Councillor Matt Schilling and Maggie Duncan from Southern Hills Ward. And I also want to make special mention of Councillor Bruce Hull. Uh, and that's a big thing for me because Councillor Hull and I have rarely seen eye to eye during my time on Marion Council uh, and, and since then. Uh, but I have been so impressed by the way that Councillor Hull spoke out against what he saw was an injustice, asked pertinent questions in the council meetings, uh, those that were held in public, and I am sure those that were held behind closed doors as well. And, uh, and uh, by asking those pertinent questions, really challenged uh, the council's administration and his fellow elected members and the mayor uh, to review this decision. I also want to make mention of Adrian Skull, the chief executive, who, uh, who has been involved in providing support as well. This club is made up of volunteers. This club is made up of people who see this as a key part of their lives, a part of our community. Volunteers want to be running water on game days. They want to be cooking the, the barbecue. They want to be working behind the bar. They don't necessarily have the skills, understanding or desire to be involved in HR issues and culture change issues. And I have said all along it is so important, so critical that the City of Marion get alongside that club, provide it with the resources, the support, the insight and the knowledge to improve uh, the culture uh, if, if there are certain elements that need to be improved uh, and move to the future. I mentioned in my, my last grieve the, the women's football team and their recent premiership, a great result for the Cobras. I did want to just share a, a statement that a, a friend of mine who plays in that team put on Facebook, and she said that this, uh, this club has brought a, a lot of good in my life when things have not been so good. The club, value, the club values that I have seen are support, respect, discipline and passion. 
The club has worked tirelessly on changing the culture surrounding footy to be one of empowerment, strength and resilience. This is the Cove Cobras that I know and the spirit which I, as their local Member of Parliament, have seen exemplified, particularly in recent weeks. And I look forward to working alongside this club. The Council has reversed its decision, given them 12 months, uh, and I look forward to working with them now and into the future. Yeah.